Salina Shaltsova, I'm an immigration. Here, I'm going to be discussing the most recent immigration news. And if time permits, afterwards, I will answer your guys' questions. I'm a practicing attorney from New York. I've been practicing immigration law in the United States for 15 years. And I'm absolutely happy to share a recent immigration news and my tips on various topics of immigration law. So thank you very much for joining. Do not forget to say hi. Let me know where you're joining from. And do not forget to type up your questions so that in the end I can refer to them and hopefully help you out a little bit and answer your question for free. Today we have a number of interesting news to discuss. Um, mostly concerning USCIS processing of various applications and changes that are coming. I would say most of the changes are positive changes, but you're going to be here to judge, of course. And if you have your comments um, as to what um, you believe is going to happen, or um, if you have your comments as to the news I'm going to be sharing, please again type up and I'll be absolutely happy to discuss them with you. Uh, hi, Grace. Hi, Ali. Hi, Jayandra. Hi, hi, Tamesha. So let's start. Well, the first thing I wanted to share with you concerns, concerns edit stamps. Well, it may not be relevant for everybody, but here what's going on. Sometimes you have to have proof that you are actually a permanent resident, but for some reason, you don't have that proof. Uh, for example, your card expired and you filed an application to remove condition from the conditional green card or you filed an application to replace the card and it hasn't come yet. And the automatic extension that you received when you filed those applications expired. So you need proof that um, you are a permanent resident for work purposes or for travel purposes. What you're going to do? Well, it's very simple. You're going to make an appointment with USCIS, with a local field office, and you're going to ask for the stamp. Of course, you will need a passport for that for the stamp confirming that you are in fact a permanent resident. We call them ADIT stamp. But interestingly enough, you do not need the stamp. If you have a receipt, for example, uh, showing that you filed relevant application to extend or to replace your permanent residence card, and you enjoy an automatic extension, and you are in the possession of the original uh, green card, you also do not need the stamp to prove that you're a permanent resident if you filed for naturalization. And you filed for naturalization on or after December 12, 2022, and the N-400 was, was filed at least six months before the expiration of your green card. This way, your green card is extended automatically for 24 months or two years. And you can travel with expired green card and the receipt for N-400. I think it's a helpful tip, right? It will save you some time and um, money if you wish, because if you go to USCIS for those appointments, it takes a long time sometimes. And uh, especially it may be helpful if you have some problems uh, getting the new passport and things like that. So this is something you need to know that in certain situations, automatic, there is an automatic proof that you are a green card holder. You do not have to have um, an expired green card. Very interesting, right? Another thing I wanted to share with you is the news about premium processing that is going to be available starting March 6, which was yesterday, for pending OPT-related um, employment authorization applications. Um, and starting April 3rd, when you file for the uh, OPT-related work authorization for the first time, you also will be able to request premium processing in the following categories. C3A, pre-completion OPT, C3B, post-completion OPT, and C3C, 24 months extension OPT. It's very convenient tool, I think, 
uh, for some money, or of course the premium processing costs money, you will be able to uh, speed up the resolution of your OPT. It can be very helpful for those in between employments, not sure as to what's happening. Um, if the employer demands employment authorization, I know that it's always easier to find an employer when you already have your card or the grant at least of your OPT. So it can be very, very helpful, but it costly. Um, I believe it's $2,500, you know, costs a lot of money. But at least there is a way out. I'm sure for many of you, if there was an opportunity to speed up your application for some fee, you would absolutely take it because one of the most common questions I received is why my application is taking so long. Today I spoke to a couple who started the adjustment of status process in 2018. Well, they had some particularities. They didn't start with my office or anything, but the point is that they just do not understand why they're in 2023 and they're still waiting and still waiting, which can be extremely frustrating. And of course, it is extremely, extremely frustrating. And one more thing I wanted to share with you. Did you know, tell me the truth if you knew, that USCIS can come to you to take your fingerprints? They just updated their policy about the fingerprints and biometrics stating that if you are in a remote location where fingerprint services are not readily available, they can arrange with law enforcement to come to you and take your fingerprints. So you do not have to take a plane to, to go to be fingerprinted. It's very interesting, actually. They do describe how this procedure needs to be done in that um, a law enforcement has to uh, fingerprint you so that there is a clear chain of custody means that there is no doubt that it's your fingerprints. And they're also in this policy stating that, um, generally speaking, they're not going to be helping somebody who is incarcerated, which is an interesting point because I just had law enforcement actually helping us fingerprint one of the clients who I represent who is detained. So despite the fact that they state in their policy they're not going to help you, they are helping you in uh, tough situations, which is a good news. So as you see, little tweaks here and there of the way USA, USS works can be very, very helpful for us when we're dealing with long delays, inconveniences related to uh, delays when we ask to replace or reissue green card. You may heard that some people, if they see some mistakes on their green card, opt not even to correct it because it takes so long to receive the corrected green card. They rather will accept the mistake and will bear risk of being, uh, you know, detained for secondary inspection if they travel overseas or have extra questions, just not to deal with delays. And of course, it shouldn't be this way. Hopefully, we're going to see great improvement in this um, processing times soon. And everybody will be very happy because that's the way it's supposed to be. I don't think that processing of cases should uh, take more than, I would say the absolute maximum should be six months, okay? I think that's more than enough to complete any background checks you'd like to complete. And it shouldn't be taking more than six months, the most, absolute, the most. And now if you guys have questions, I'll be absolutely happy to answer them. Hi, Lemon. Hi, Grace. You're very welcome. I'm really happy that I can be of um, use to some of you. And if I help you a little bit, I'm, I'm very, very happy. Hi, Ali. Ali, you, we meet every week. Hopefully one day we can meet in person as well. Hi, Deandra. Georgia, yay. Maryland. Hi, Jack and Darhand. And I'm sorry if I mispronounced your name. Hi, Mr. Sink. New York. Hi, Jane. So no problem. No problem. Very nice seeing you guys. Thank you for joining the live. Hi, Jose. From Venezuela. Yay. Hi, DT Pick. Will be my marriage interview waived if I have asylum pending? Who told you that? Who told you that? No, 
Just because you have a asylum pending, the marriage interview is not going to be waived. In fact, if you didn't have a asylum pending, immigration inter um, marriage in interview could have been waived. But I almost can guarantee you that USCIS would love to hear from you with regard to your asylum claim. Believe it or not, but during the marriage-based adjustment of status, if you have asylum pending, USCIS offices may ask you some questions about your asylum. They usually do not go in depth, but they're just screening for any evidence of fraud because you may be aware that if somebody's filing for asylum and if they commit a mistake, fraud, frivolous asylum case, however, you know, USCIS may call it, then they will may be found inadmissible and barred from any types of immigration benefits. So for that reason, if you previously filed for asylum and now filing for anything else, USCIS will always screen the case very, very carefully. And uh, in my experience, at least, uh, they will call person for the interview rather than waive the interview. Hi, but Solomon, I hope, you know, it helps a little bit. Hi, can I apply for free health insurance when asylum pending? Can you apply for free health insurance when asylum pending? Well, if the application is lawful, if you qualify for it otherwise, asylum does not require that you're not going to be a public charge. All right, so as long as nothing is misrepresented and you clearly qualify for the benefit, you do not misrepresent your status some people make mistakes and say that they're U.S. citizens. Never ever do that because this is like the worst thing that an immigrant can do in the United States because it basically de de deprives you of any opportunity to, to get status later. It's called um, citizenship claim bar. So as long as you tell the truth and you're going to forward go forward with asylum because asylum does not require you to demonstrate that you're not going to be a public charge, you should be okay. Hi, Shabir. What is current year of U visa processing? Guys, really do not know. I will be absolutely truthful. I would say somewhere in 2017, 2018. But again, sometimes it's, um, it depends, really. It's like with asylum cases. Some cases that were filed in early 2017 were already called for the interview. When cases that were filed in 2016 were not. So it's hard for me to really guess here. Hi, Aleem. Any update about essential workers? Be absolutely um, honest. Do not know, have not heard. If you heard of anything and you would like to ask me, I'll be absolutely happy to comment on that. Hi, Vanka from Texas. Yay, is there any chance for DACA? I think there is, but we're all waiting for the Supreme Court decisions on that um what's gonna happen with daca how it's going to go hopefully biden administration is actually going to support the legislation that is being proposed if you recall there is something called um dream act 2023 it's not perfect but it can be amended to to be better so if both parties are working on that they really can provide relief to um Dreamers and DACA or potential DACA beneficiaries. Hi, True Wisdom. That's another loyal, loyal supporter. Good day, Lina. Hope you're well. I have a question. Um, in reference to the I-130, my daughter filed the affidavit of support. Is it this tax year next year? The application was filed on December 15th in review. When you file for your, um, you know, when somebody files for you, rather, right? and they have to also submit a affidavit of support, they submit the most recent tax return available. For example, if your daughter would have to ask for an extension to file her tax returns, then she'll, she will be submitting the tax return that is um, the latest that she has available the last year, right? 2020, what... Uh, Wow, 2021, right, because we're filing for 2022. That's how it works. So the best practice would be to submit the most recent 
the mo three most recent tax transcripts, not even tax returns, transcripts. Transcripts are a little bit different. They do not take that many pages, and they also serve as proof that taxes were actually filed. Usually, it's very easy to get your tax transcripts. You just need to um, request them from IRS website, and it's done online. Hi, Jeff. I have been wrong by immigration under the law. My case is a big win. If I could get someone to at least hear me out. Well, I'm sure there are many lawyers who, who can take a look at this. I have to tell you that uh, suing government, is, if this is your intention, um, you have to put good consideration into it. Government is protected by various federal laws. It's not so easy to, um, to sue, to win rather. Sometimes you can settle. It also depends when the timeline of when what happened in the lawsuit is extremely, extremely important. I actually do handle federal litigation sometimes and the state litigation. So I'm very familiar with the procedures and different deadlines. And of course, there is no time in the world in this 20 minutes that I'm spending with you that I'll be able to to to, to put everything, you know, concisely, but Timing is important. The reasons, if what you've done after you receive denials is very important. It's, there is a concept of exhaustion of administrative remedies. It's very, very um, important. Okay. Hi, Alia. Hello, I'm in removal proceedings based on asylum. Could I marry someone who is filing asylum application in the USA? Can you say consider this kind of marriage and can she put me on her application? Yes, 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 it can be done, but there is a but. Um, it will depend on the court and the prosecutor if they would like to give you more time to wait for your partner's application to be considered by USCIS, many different factors. Do they have the interview scheduled or not? Because the government, you, 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 you probably, what you want to say is that, oh, I may have status for my partner, so please stop my proceedings. The judge may agree to that, or the judge may say, but when will your partner be called for the interview? Oh, we do not know. And the current practice shows that it can be seven years of wait time plus. So can you ask for, and can you do this? Yes, but what's going to happen? Um, it also depends if your partner is in court or not, right? What's going to happen? I cannot tell you. The best thing to do is to discuss it with your lawyer. Hi, Mr. Singh. When will be Biden new rule will be effective for border asylum? Uh, there is no set date. There is no set date. I hope it's not going to be effective at all. Uh, there is a lot of lobby against it. We're referring to new asylum transit ban, basically saying that if you're coming through Mexico, right, or from, from some other third country, not your country of origin, and you didn't request asylum there, and you're not a victim of a human trafficking and some other crime, and you were not paroled, you will be denied asylum. So hopefully it's not going to be implemented at all because it's very unfair but if it will if the administration will go forward potentially it will be in may thank you ali i know that you've been following for a long time yes thank you ali let's see hi vera i'm already Biometrics for U visa nine months ago, but I didn't get work permits. When work permits issued for U visa? Thank you. How to answer this question nicely? Like say never. I cannot say that, but we do not know when. The problem with this U visa and work permits is that we really do not know when they will come, and that's a problem. I would say maybe a year, hopefully since filing but I, I do not know guys the problem is, is they're so backed up that um i i will not be able to tell you hi sandeep can we move the master hearing date earlier all you can do is to try 
You can try to file a motion to advance your hearing, but how successful you'll be depends on, um, on the court. Depends on the court. Hi, true wisdom. I'm also in a pickle. If I show with my daughter me to do that affidavit of support, I'm going to owe taxes. If I show less, I won't qualify for immigration. Should I get a joint sponsor? Well, first of all, I'm not qualified to provide you with any tax advice. But general advice for those who believe that um, the petitioner's taxes are not going to be sufficient. Yes, get the joint sponsor. Some people uh, would try to use assets to qualify for um, affidavit of support, but I'm gonna tell you that it's hard for many, many people because there are rules about how to use assets. You have to show that you can liquidate assets within a year. It's hard. So if I were you, I would go and try to find a joint sponsor. Hi, Frederick, I have a girlfriend and she wants to come to the UK or I should come over. What those she needs to visit the UK? She's from California. I really do not know what she needs to visit the UK. The thing is this, I practice only in the United States and I just do not know anything about UK or Canada and I do not want to give you wrong information. Okay, and I'm gonna take the last question for today. Hi, Andre. I have a TPS and travel document. Can I go to vacation outside USA? Absolutely, you can. Those who have TPS related travel document can use it the way they like it. Okay, there are no restrictions. You do not have to be afraid even to return back home um, to your country from which you receive TPS. TPS is not asylum. Okay. <clears throat> so you can use it however you want. Actually, interestingly enough, these days, at least there is an in interpretation that. If you come back using the TPS advanced parole, you will be in a lawful status for adjustment of status purposes in connection with employment. So there is a great benefit in traveling using that TPS document. Well, guys, thank you very much for watching. Do not forget to like, share this video if you can. And um, of course, share your thoughts and comments. What you would like to see is improving in the United States immigration system. And um, I absolutely will join you if everything is well next week. And I hope to see you soon.